Welcome to Color Harmony. My name is Eric Francis. Today we'll be discussing the umber wash. Now, uh, as usual, I'll start off with the drawing, but before we begin to paint, I want to briefly explain to you why I uh, make an umber wash. The umber wash is an underpainting. It serves as a blueprint for what you're about to do. We're all visual artists. We're really visual. So it's nice to see the thing somewhat complete before we actually begin to really get into the painting. This umber wash took me around, uh, say, like five to ten minutes. When I first began to paint, I was an oil painter and I was really into the old masters. I bought a book that said how to paint like the old masters. You know, they had a bunch of different examples of uh, what they did. But in particular, I like Caravaggio and uh, Veronese. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Now, they used an umber underpainting. And when I switched from uh, using oils to acrylics, I used basically the same techniques. Like it was, it was kind of difficult trying to figure out how to make it work. But once I did, it all went well. A wash is a very thin layer of paint. The paint is usually very thin when I'm finishing a painting. I use this umber wash to cover the canvas because it's kind of hard staying in a white canvas. Plus, it's a neutral color. It makes it easier to judge the colors that you put down on the canvas as opposed to putting it down on a white canvas. The other kind of underpaintings that I've seen are um, I've seen black and white, I've seen red, blue, even greenish. But I prefer the neutral umber. This uh, umber wash stage helps you solve problems also. There's little things that you can't pick up on in a simple drawing. You can only see it once you have all the color on the canvas. Well, this helps you pick up on these things really early on in the beginning stages. You know, an eye, a nose, or the lip might be off a little bit. You can catch it early instead of catching it later in the painting when you're nearly done, you know? And you know, like when you catch it later, it's really aggravating. Then you want to take your painting and toss it like a frisbee across the room. <laughs> Could have avoided it. Could have did an umber wash. Wherever you're at right now, I want you to sit down and imagine yourself getting angry at a painting. It's pretty hilarious. <laughs> Whether you see good or bad things in a painting is totally up to you. Or you can see both good and bad. Increase the good things correct the bad things and keep moving forward like that. All right, what you're watching here is you're seeing how much I really dilute this paint. Like this umber wash stage is done like a watercolor. The paint is very thin. Just be sure that you have a canvas that's really absorbent. All canvases are not created equally. Sometimes the gesso that they use is more like plastic, so the paint is not absorbent. You know this because the paint pulls up on the canvas and forms drip marks. So I change the color of the paint from dark to light by adding water. The first thing I do is paint in color number one. It's, it's all umber, but I paint it in first and I let it completely dry. And then I paint in number two. I let that completely dry. Then I paint in color number three. I want you guys to do me a favor. If you enjoyed what you saw, could you please subscribe, or like, add a comment, or share with someone you love. If you want to see more artwork, you can visit my blog. There will be a link in the description. And if you want to further support this content, you can donate. Your donations go to pay for the price of pens, pencils, canvases, paints, and hopefully a tablet. I thank you very much for whatever you leave. It's greatly appreciated. These videos are made in response to questions I get asked all the time, so feel free to ask. You might see an answer in a video. Peace.